Thank you for tuning in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community. The only station giving you double the information and inspiration. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife. Trained, willing, and able to help you discover your creative voice and birth it for the world through whatever medium you choose to use. The sponsor for today's show is Our Voices LLC, a writing and editing consulting firm and entertainment studio ready to help you tell your story your way. For more information, email at Our Voices LLC at gmail.com. Today's show is Help! I Hate My Characters. If you were with me last week, I opened up the dialogue about really scrutinizing what you believe is a story. So often people come to me saying, I've got this book. We chat. I may have read the manuscript, but in the end, it isn't a book. Instead, it's great fodder for a book to become. Many people believe they have a great story, but it's missing some ingredients. Today, we're going to discuss one of those ingredients. And that's how to make your characters memorable. For my writers who struggle with their characters, ask yourself a few questions. Are the characters cliched, stereotypical, flat? I'm going to give you some pointers on how to make uh, flat characters full, weak characters strong. So let's discuss it. What makes a good character? The first thing I would say is a character with a definite point of view. You want characters to be able to have a particular way they see things, and they act in that way all the time. There may be some growth, there may be a few changes, but their personal view is their personal view, and they keep it going. You also want a character that is active in his or her own life. In other words, show me, don't tell me. People have bandied that that saying around for years. Here's what it really means. Your character must push the story. Your character must be the person active, must be the one who is making the decisions, must be the one who is getting everybody in trouble, must be the one who's trying to pull everybody out of trouble. Whatever it is that you've given your character, that person must do the action. It can't, you can't have the action done onto them. They've got to be the one that trips into it, that schemes it, that comes up with it, that makes that decision. It's got to happen. They've got to be the one pushing. Their decisions should be right or wrong, and their character should grow from that. So say you have a character who is the good guy, and the good guy has this flaw about telling lies. They're really a sweet person, but they can't tell the truth for nothing. So everything that they do is going to be a lie they told that gets them into trouble. It's their flaw, their action that puts them in that situation. Outside of that, the writer becomes naked on the page with characters and storytelling. Yes, I did say it. You need to be naked on the page. Being naked on the page means being vulnerable. We've got to be able to see the soft side and the hard side of all your characters. We've got to be able to hear the heart, hear the soul, understand the gut of what that character is going through. Their inner life must come from the outside. So whatever's going on in the inside of their minds must come out and be shown on the screen. If we're talking about film, if we're talking about television, if we're talking about theater, if we're talking about books, it still must push that action. They'll have a great inner life, but that inner life has to be shown in the action. There's a movie example. Um, I'm a Star Wars kid. Always loved it. Jen Erso in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Now, Jen was rough. She was rough and tumble, didn't care. She had seen her parents snatched up by the enemy. And when she grew up, she grew up on the hard side of the streets. That was her character. So that means everything she did was from that point of view. It took the entire story for her to change and go from someone who was out for self to someone who was willing to save a universe. That's a lot of growth. Theater example, Celie in The Color Purple. This woman was abused from the time that she saw the world. And then from that abuse, she had a certain mindset about her life. She felt that she was ugly, that she was too black, that nobody would understand her, nobody would listen to her, and that she was a garbage pail. Why? Because that's how she was treated. That's her perspective. So everything that came from her was from that place. She changed over time to become a businesswoman who was just 
all that and being able to say, hey, I want my kids. I want to see them. This is what we need to do. But she had to grow. The next one is the book example. Uh, the, the writer is Asha Bandali in her book, A Prisoner's Wife, a Memoir. This is a woman who, got, who married a man who was already in jail. And she's unapologetic for that love. Unapologetic. You hear that in every line of the book. You watch their story unfold. That's her perspective, and she stuck with it. So when you're writing your stories, have a perspective. Stick with it. Don't change. Be true to with the perspective that you're trying to, to push out. Each character should have something different, but all are trying to get to whatever that end goal is for you. When we come back, we will continue our discussion on help. I hate my characters. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife. You're tuned in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. We'll be right back after the break. Spring turns to summer and summer to fall. Fall turns to winter for sure. Seasons change. Joy and pain, life is full of meaning. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. But how could you see that some things were not meant to be? We make our plans, but it's all in God's hands. Life is full of love, many Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, and those streaming live through free tune-in radio app and through iHeartRadio. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing help. I hate my characters. On Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife, trained, willing, and able to help you discover your creative voice and birth it through the world through whatever medium you choose to use. 
In the last segment, I spoke about the ingredients of making a strong character. We spoke about the character being active in his or her life and the need for that character to have a definite point of view. Now we're going to talk about a few other things. Is your character well-rounded? Here's what I mean by that. Good character development includes the physical. What does your character look like? How do they walk in their bodies? Do they have a limp? Are they scarred? Do they have, um, do they have different pigmentations? Do they have tattoos? What's their mind like? How do they think? Are they a quick thinker? Are they a slow thinker? Do they believe in the glass being half full or half empty? What's their spiritual life like? Are they, do they believe in a God? Do they not believe in God? Do they uh, think about prayers or do they have something else? Or is, is liquor their place of, of place of religion? What is their physicalness? Now we're talking about backstory. Backstory means what's your character's education? Do they have an education? Are the streets their education? What is their education level? Are they, did they drop out in the eighth grade? Did they drop out junior year in high school? Did they even see a form of education at all? Do they speak the language? And what language is your, is your characters talking in? Is it English? Is it Spanish? Is it Portuguese? Is it a language you've made up? What's their family like? Did they have a family? Did they grow up with a mother and a father? Did they grow up with siblings? Did they grow up by themselves? Did they have a family structure that was splintered? Did they, were they in the system? Were they adopted? Were they never adopted? Did they never have a family? What's their hometown? A person who grew up in the North is different from a person who grew up in the South. A person who grew up on the East Coast is different from a person who grew up on the West Coast. A person who grew up in the States is different from someone who grew up in the West Indies. What's that person's hometown? The hometown will shape who that character will become. Next, please make sure your, your character has plenty of flaws. We're not looking for perfect characters. We want flawed characters, characters that we can connect, characters your audience can connect with. People are flawed. We are not perfect. We don't do everything absolutely correctly. We don't do everything the same way that everybody else does. Neither should your characters. They should be beautifully flawed. Do they have a potty mouth? Are they arrogant? Are they users? Are they a show off? What's their issues? Next, what are the stakes for your characters? What's really at stake for them? If you don't tell this story right now for this character, what happens? If this character doesn't reach that goal, what happens? If this character fails, and never reaches anything. What happens to your story? Know your character's goal. Every character must have a strong desire to be in that story. They have to have a strong goal to get at the end of the story. If they don't have a strong goal, they're not going to last. You have to give them something that they have to reach for at every moment, every page of your story. What is your character willing to do to reach that goal? Yeah, and I do mean it just like that. What would your character do to reach his or her goal? Would they sell themselves out? Would they go back to school? Would they take a job they hate? Would they sell something on the street? Would they feel guilty about it later? What is your character willing to do to get the goal? What is your character not willing to do to get the goal. And when it's presented, then what? That makes it different, that makes it interesting. What will happen if the character never reaches the goal? What happens to your story? What happens to their, their life in your story? What happens to their life with the other characters that you've created? If you have a character that doesn't reach the goal, how does that impact the other characters? Is that a problem? Think about if Dorothy never went to the wizard in The Wizard of Oz. Think if, if Dory stopped halfway through, the lion wouldn't get any courage, the tin man wouldn't have a heart, and the scarecrow wouldn't have a brain. All because Dorothy stopped. What happens to the other characters that you've orchestrated? What happens to them when stuff stops? A question that I'm always asked is, is knowing the inner life of a character important? Absolutely. You need to know how your character thinks. You need to know how your character feels. How they think, how they feel will then inform what they do. 
if you don't know their inner life, if you have no idea that when they mess up, they call themselves stupid every time, if you have no idea that every time they, um, they make someone else mess up, they yell, yeah, that's a whole different perspective. You've got to know what they're truly thinking to know what it is that they're going to do next. Now, I can hear some people say, hey, I think a lot of things and I don't act on them. In drama, let them act on it. Let them do the things we would never do. You know what I'm talking about. You have that conversation with your boss and you know straight up that that person's lying. And inside you're screaming, liar! But you'd never say it because you want your job. Now, Sandra Bullock sits across her boss with her legs crossed and she knows that, that the man is lying and she goes, you know what, you're lying. And I, you know how I know you're lying? Because you do this, 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 and this every time you lie. Look at that, your eyes twitching now. But that's Sandra Bullock on the screen saying the things that we want to tell our boss on a daily. But she gets to say it on the screen and get paid for it. We would get fired. So you want to be able to find out what's your character really thinking because that's where the fun dialogue comes from. That's where the fun action comes from. Say you're sitting across someone who has been a bully your entire life and you're meeting them at their high school reunion and they're still a bully. Only this time you've learned karate. This time you've learned karate. And this time they're acting a rip dang fool. So instead of being nice and being the doormat, you grab that person by the scruff of their neck, yank them down on the floor and just say, what do you got for me now? All crazy. Would you do it for real? No, but your character can. After the break, we'll wrap up our discussion on help. I hate my characters. You're tuned in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. Don't go anywhere because we'll be right Vaughn, I know we're not supposed to sing this tonight, but I keep hearing this. And after all that I've been through, I've got a story to tell you. He wouldn't let the devil consume me. Because God knew he could use me. And God is no respecter of persons what he's done for me he'll do the same for you God is no respecter of persons what he's done for me Cause he's giving you the same grace. God is giving you the same grace. God's giving you the same grace. I'm talking about that Daniel Grace. Hey. Same grace. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Tell him, God is. What he's done for me, he'll do the same for you. God is no What he's done for me, he'll do the same for you. Cause he's given you the same grace. I needed to release that tonight. So some of you would understand that even though you are in the fire, the same grace that he gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the same grace that God has given you. What is that, Bishop? What is that grace, Bishop? You're going to be in the fire, but when you come out, you won't smell like smoke. You're going to be in the fiery furnace, but when you come out, you won't look like what you've been through. God's given you the same. Grace. Lay your hand on your neighbor's say. 
Welcome back to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, and those streaming live through free TuneIn Radio app and through iHeartRadio. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing, hey, I hate my characters. On Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife, trained, willing, and able to help you discover your creative voice and birth it for the world through whatever medium you choose to use. In the last segment, I discussed the importance of creating memorable characters. If you want a story that people remember, create characters your audience won't stop talking about. This means writers invest time in the characters' backstories, storylines, assets, and flaws. You raise the stakes, give voice to the characters' inner life. Quick tip, if a character still won't fully, sh fully show him or herself, flip the gender, flip the age, change the year, change location. Do something to shake that character out of his or her doldrums. Change ethnicity. You'd be surprised what a little flip of something essential will do to the life of a story. I once was writing a character, a, um, a bad guy, a general, and I was writing that character as a man. I couldn't get it. The character did not work for me. I tried and tried and tried, and quite frankly, the character sucked. There was nothing I can do to make that character sing. My teacher said, change the gender. I said, do what? He said, change the gender. I made that, I made that person a, a woman changed the whole life of my story. Now the general is, she is a, 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 just, she tears it up on the screen and she makes me enjoy just how bad she really is. And for a villain, she's the kind of villain I'd like to have lunch with across the room and we're separate tables and we can still have conversations. She's that kind of character. It's like uh, Hannibal Lecter. You want, to have, you want to have tea with him while he's still in a cage 100 feet away from you. But it's those type of characters that are memorable. Those type of characters that make you go, wow, I want to see that story again. Bottom line is this. Build out your characters. Make them rich. Make them interesting. Unforgettable. Know them until you see them sitting next to you at the kitchen table. Talk about them until they become your best friend. Or not, just depending upon your conversation. Okay, you know what's next. Bookshelf. That's right, more homework. So this time, I'm recommending The Art of Dramatic Writing, its basis in the creative interpretation of human motives by Leos Egri. I know, I'm going to say that again. The Art of Dramatic Writing, its basis in the creative interpretation of human motives by Leos Egri, L-A-J-O-S-E-G-R-I. 
This book is a classic. It gives insight to the human condition and gives writers direction into how to build a human being that grows over time and over the course of the story. What you want to do is you want to start with your character at one place. And if these are your main characters, you want them to have a 180 degree turn. So they're not at the same place where they began in the story. They've actually made a complete and beautiful arc. Now, every character doesn't make the 180 degree arc, but I believe every character should have some type of change. I'm not a person who likes flat characters. I prefer whole characters. Even some of the quote unquote throwaway characters, there's gotta be something that makes them different and makes them interesting and makes them memorable. They may not have a 180 degree turn, but they can move about five degrees. They can move about 20 degrees. They can definitely move, and that's what we want. Join us next week as we continue our discussion with I Got a Story, Now What's the Medium? Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Continue to tune in every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Please remember to connect with me by going to wdrbmedia.com. Click on the Radio Shows tab and go to our Voices Radio page. Also, if you want to be a guest on the show or want free advertising, reach me at my website at NicoleMPalmer.com. That's N-I-C-H-O-L-E-M-Palmer.com. You've been listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife on WDRB Media, the voice of the community for double the information and inspiration. Until next week, thanks and peace. And remember, in the end, you must write the vision and make it plain. I'm aware they plotting, but I got no option. And I can't be stopped, I'ma keep on walking. And my power and my purpose and that backbite is so worthless. And my faith on and it's working. I'm one of one and I'm certain that I won the battle. It's over, we did it. I'm still, I'm C, I'm P, no limit. Can't stop it, it's me and Corbin in the pocket. Got the plug in the socket. <gasps> they told you that you couldn't do it cause you washed up. Ain't like them bad girls said you should get your soul up. But I got this plan and you might not understand I'ma go hard as I can And I'm gonna be the boss of it and Just watch me do this, put no limits, only swag on it Walk right up to the front where I belong and brag on it Go to the top, I'ma give it all I got Might take a lot, but we ain't gonna never stop I don't believe I'm something special Can't take that from me So you can say what you want I go harder, stronger supposed to be But I don't let it break me Cause I'm still on my way